Hi, my name is Ross Lucas. I'm a theatre maker and I interview other theatre makers. So I wanted to get Alexandra on the uh, channel to talk about movement direction. Um, I never really knew what a movement director could um, achieve in a production until I actually worked with one. And, and I found the experience to be incredibly profitable to my uh, practice and also to the production I was working on. So I thought it might be a time to unpack uh, what the role is about. So we delve into things like uh, moving in character, the movement of the props, moving of the scenery, dramaturgy, uh, all sorts of interesting uh, ideas. So do click to subscribe and thanks for watching. Hello, Alexandra. How are you? Hello, Russell. I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for coming today to talk to us on the channel. Um, in a moment, we're going to talk about movement direction and the role of the movement director in a production. But first of all, tell us about you. How do you define yourself these days? Um, I tend to call myself a theatre maker, but sometimes I'll put the hat on a director or performer or a writer, but theatre maker seems to work for me. So who are you now? Well, I work across three fields as, a, as an artist, as a performer and a performance maker, as a movement educator, and as a researcher. And none of those include movement direction specifically, but they all overlap when I work as a movement director, because I'm obviously researching the needs of a production. I'm giving the information from my movement analysis training and my movement education practice, which is a lot about attuning to different needs and figuring out solutions. Right. And then as an artist, I resonate with being in this other perspective on the outside of a production rather than on the inside of a production. So I just give the short answer of artist, educator and researcher when people ask me what I do. But of course, when I am in the role of movement director, then there's a different kind of hierarchy of what's important in that room. Yeah. So you also do dramaturgical support in some ways, yeah? Okay. Yes. Which one's your favourite job? <laughs> Horrible question. <laughs> I really like all of them. Okay. I really, they all feed each other, actually. I can do okay. them all because I do them all. Um, and I was performing more recently and it was terrifying. And there was that reminder of, oh my goodness, like the stakes of carrying the responsibility of the vision. Yeah. In the flesh. Yeah. In that live encounter with an audience and that kind of um well affect you know the kind of thing that happens when you're watched that yeah. is very different to being seen even through a screen you know that live space yeah. did i like it sure it's a huge adrenaline rush um but it was a great reminder of then what my role is when i'm on the other side yeah you're right it was a terrible question but it, but it is but it is it's, you kind of love them all differently don't you it's the you know, you get so, so many things out of it, I agree. Um, so you're here to talk specifically about movement direction. What is movement direction? What are movement directors? Is there a definition? What are they? What is it? It's taking responsibility for sometimes the kind of overall movement character of a production so that there's a coherence between the characters the staging the direction the lighting the scenographic choices that is someone keeping an eye on I, i'm i'm loath to say non-verbal because voice is still part of movement but if we if we do use the word non-verbal you know someone just took the sound away from a production what's going on visually and kinetically through movement rather than static images. So the movement director is there to take responsibility for the unfolding of the vision of a production, that there's a sense of coherence between the different parts. And then a movement director might also zoom into one of those parts, which might be about character physicality. So that the physicality of a particular arc of a character's role makes sense, that they're, and this is where the kind of cultural element comes into it, you know, so some productions might have a very particular kind of historical or cultural setting where there needs to be a certain amount of, I say the word coherence, but it's, sometimes you'll see a posture where you'll think, you're in another era entirely. People's spines were not doing that. People's ways of putting their hands in their pockets was not like this. And in, 
So there's some very specific observations that be would betray something that didn't fit within the production. Um, the movement director's job for me also really depends on the director with whom I'm working, actually. Mm -hmm. Even though I have a set of tools that I would draw from, it really is also about how the director works and what they need from a movement director and mm -hmm. what their skills they would like to get somebody else to kind of flesh out or, or support because they don't have them so clearly. So sometimes my role is to really work only on physicality because the, the blocking or the staging is very clear from the director's ideas of how scenes should should become and the kind of relations that should be forming and sometimes it's more about creating some kind of movement sequences even if there's to be a um a section where it isn't about verbal communication but is about some other kind of movement communication that is supposed to act as a prelude or as a kind of recuperation from listening for the audience. You know, there's this moment where something is about kind of foreshadowing something through some physicality or some changing. And often this will be done through sound or music, but it can also be done through mm. movement, through traveling in the space or some shift of posture or some more subtle way or overt way of adding to the sensorial experience of what theater is, which is not only listening. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's funny, you reminded me of a production I did years ago and I had a movement director and I trained in movement so I, I, I didn't know what to do um, because I, I definitely associate movement within my direction when I'm directing. I think it's absolutely key, which we'll get onto in a moment. And so I had this lovely guy and um, he worked with the, the actors in the company separately to me because of, we, we just you know spoke about the era and the movement and stuff and he worked on that, which is wonderful. And then there was one particular scene in the piece that I could not solve and he was just able to do it. And I just, I was so like, oh, thank gosh, because I couldn't solve it because I was doing everything else. And it really validated the whole role. Not that, you know, I didn't think any less of movement directors before that, but I'd never worked with one before. And it was that moment where I knew I could just give this scene, a very complicated fight scene with 10 actors, uh, with throwing stuff. And also because he worked on the characters, he was able to, to, to assist in that. It was just a remarkable experience to be able to have somebody else do that for me and really actually connect to the production rather than be an annex, as it were. Yes, I, in many ways I see it similar to my dramaturgical work where you're really, you're in this kind of supporting role as a friend of the piece, you know, you're, you're there to make sure that the thing that is, is being aimed towards continues to function and function well. And because you're dealing with individuals, you might find, um, it, and it's the opposite of coming in with a vision of like, oh, I've read the script and this is what I think as a movement director, it should totally be about this. And it's like, and then you get in the room and like, well, if your actors are not physically able to do that because of their training, what's the point in trying to force some sort of image onto people where they feel uncomfortable? I worked with an actor once who'd had a really terrible experience with another movement director and felt so, hmm, I think he felt confident about his performance skills, but then felt very unconfident about his physicality and really not trusting of a movement director. Right. So my role was to support him to feel comfortable and confident with the things that the director was asking for, mm. with a meta level of process of justifying my presence in the room or just making him feel safe so he could then explore and feel totally yeah. at ease. There's a really interesting dynamic of working, which is about making people look the best that they can look, you know, mm. like, and because I have a whole load of experience as a movement educator, I have a lot of tools to be able to suggest to someone how to get, like, how to get something else out of their physicality rather than trying to give them the answers. You know, I work much more from the inside out, you know, from the kind of the sensation of the body and the kind of, a consciousness of where your body is in space and how it's relating to gravity and all these things so that they can discover it for themselves rather than me saying stand like this it's a completely arbitrary instruction yeah because you live in movement not in stillness and hmm. um, this may be a controversial question but what's the difference between a choreographer and a movement director 
a choreographer, it's not a controversial question because a choreography is, a choreographer generally would be more responsible for making set sequences of movement. Mm. And a movement director may not be producing set sequences of movement that have to be replicated. I mean, this is a really traditional way of also understanding the concept of choreography, because it is not only this now, we, we also know that an expanded notion of choreography is about um, creating maybe choreographic scores or structures for performances, which is not about dancing steps in a particular way mm. to music. But historically in the theatre, choreography relates more to the, the creation of dancers. So you might even find in you know, more historical works, there'll be some court dances or social dances that require particular dance styles, dance genres to be kind of facilitated. And the movement director may also do that. They may also deal with different kinds of dance styles. But I, me and other people see that dance is only one part of movement, that movement is this kind of overarching framework, well, overarching phenomenon <laughs> of human experience and non-human experience. And dance is one part of that. And then there's many different styles and genres and ways of approaching that. And in, in a production, you might want the skills of a choreographer more explicitly for particular dance styles and needs, mm. which isn't to say that they couldn't also do some of the work of movement direction. Mm. Um, it depends on, it depends partly on their training. I didn't train as an actor. I trained in dance and choreography. So mm. it's also the tools that I bring from understanding theatre have been from working as a movement director in theatre, mm. watching directors and learning from them on the job, actually, how, mm. how theatre is made and what actors need and what actors need at different times. Yeah. Um, just you, you, you touched on um, sonography uh, earlier on. How important, or have you ever come in, and there you go, have you ever had a job where you've had to uh, voice an opinion or you, you've put um, some thoughts across about how maybe scenes move or set or costume or props or anything? Is that also you know, kind of embellished your work? Have you found that your eyes now go, oh, actually, right, that needs to do that. That seems more in tune with the production. Does that come into your skill set as well at some point? Just trying to think. I've done some stuff with objects and sonography. There's, I think, and I've done a lot of stuff with sculptural costume as a performer. So I also have some, some stuff from that to talk about. But in terms of my theatre work, I've worked on productions where um, the set has been moved around by actors and so it's been, there's a scene change that is really the opposite of a curtain down, curtain up, blackout situation where the, the, the scene is moving and the actors are moving the, the kind of the set and it has to kind of absolutely flow into the next image so that there's no kind of um, breaks, you know, that there's this kind of ongoingness of how one image is becoming another image and there's always two things to think about, isn't there, with like moving heavy things around. <laughs> First is like safety. <laughs> Doing it in a way that is safe, you know, obviously no one wants to break themselves moving some girders around. But the other is also the how of that movement, you know, so how you make contact, how you approach an object, how you contact an object, and then how you apply force to that object. Mm. Those things you can make choices about to then Mm. accumulate a particular quality you know it's not just about you and the object it's now the relationship that is built together and then if there's other people involved so the, I have it actually as a as a dancer when I'm working in more choreographic pieces and there is a there are objects as part of that project and I see this horrible shift of when it's because it, I see it really often with dancers because they haven't been trained necessarily in theatre making when it goes from being just an mm. object uh, that they're dealing with as a kind of, as a prop, and it could be literally any object. And you're kind of like, you're dealing with this in a very arbitrary manner. And then when it starts to really, you see the resonance of the function of that object. Yeah. And so these kind of subtle shifts of the way that an object is related to, or is made to mean something. Mm. That's, I think, part of the work of movement direction to kind of understand some of that physicality and that relationship to an object that that is often very taken for granted. And I think it's about, yes, but look what your body does when you now treat this as something very precious, or look what your body does when you treat this as something very meaningless. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating because, it's, again, when, I, when I've got my director's hat on, movement in my direct, with my director role is, is 
key. It really is key. It, it's huge, actually. And um, I never forget my dance teacher used to say this wonderful sentence. He would say, uh, Russell, remember you listen with your eyes. And that was like, took me a while to fathom that out. I was like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you do. You, you watch for information and then you compute that information, don't you? Um, and Yeah, and if I might say something in response to that, I work quite a bit with an opera director and she's so interested in the breath that is produced when you see, when you take in the information and what, what that breath is, that mm. then is like part of the resources for opera singing. She's, deal she's dealing with then like how you work with a responsive breath that then becomes the support for something else. And it's, it really is about giving a little bit more time to perceive, to take it in, to have a response. Mm. And these kinds of reactions that go on in the everyday all the time, and it's about giving them different kinds of mm. duration and experience. And then uh, sometimes they really don't need to take all that time then in, in the flow of a, a production, but to know that these are the kinds of the, the mechanics that are going on all the time, uh, I think is very useful for actors to understand and to experience and have this very embodied experience of it in the way that breath then speaks to this. You don't have to like add any movement, there's movement already going on because you're breathing, you know, you're having this response to this beautiful image of listening from the eyes. I mean, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and, and the audience really are good at picking up those minute responses, aren't they? They don't, they don't always realise it, but they actually, they really, really do compute uh, those things and we can manipulate them which is what kind of what the theatrical experience is about it's the manipulation of illusion etc etc oh, it's a big interview this if one day we have more time but um, just before we finish um, if somebody is wanting to look at movement direction as a job as a role um, they've maybe done some choreography maybe interested in direction as well is there a path or is there a way in that you would say, knowing know what you know, would you go, oh, okay, right, this really served me well, I think you should try this, just as a kind of a handshake to a future movement director? I think I would look at the work that's being made and look at the work that inspires you and excites you and makes you go, oh, I wish I had been doing that. Mm. And then you look at the kind of skills involved. So if, for example, you've been doing some choreography, but really you're interested in motion capture, for example, mm. and the kind of work with actors that's needed to create kind of, I mean, this is more for film than for theatre, I guess, but mm. if, you are, if you get really interested in the kind of movement needs for that kind of interest, then you go and you know, find someone like Sarah Perry and she runs workshops for, for um, motion capture and building animals, for example, and then you can kind of, build your skill set by kind of taking it towards the different needs of movement direction or for example if you're really interested in all the fight stuff go on a fight direction course mm -hmm. and like add to your movement direction training by having those skills to be able to kind of then be able to orient yourself towards work that requires a lot of fighting yeah. um i think i mean there's one ma in london that was doing kind of movement direction there's very few other pathways it seems and you, you kind of see that people build it themselves really um i did try and shadow some movement direction directors before and it was very hard I, no one said yes you know <laughs> there's, a certain, right. there's a certain privacy of the rehearsal room and they don't want any more bodies in the rehearsal room you know there's, it's already a lot of effort to get that amount of people together for yeah. this more private space of rehearsal before then making it public and mm. but if you can shadow someone or assist and even just working as an assistant to a director without it being about the movement but if you're there as a movement director assisting a piece of theatre you're still going to learn a lot about all the different things that happen in a rehearsal room so i mean in this particular era obviously that's harder and harder mm. but it's not impossible because productions still need movement and even this this era that now relies even more on film even more you need to understand movement. I mean, I know we don't have a lot of time, but I was rereading an essay by Walter Benjamin from 1936, and he's having a real rant. It's, it's, the, it's called The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. Okay. And he's ranting, analytically debating the advent of film, because he's, he's kind of comparing it to this shift from when 
photography appeared and all the fine artists were up in arms about, yes, but then where does that leave me as a portrait for painter? Like when now there's this photography thing and he's exploring the same shift of theater and film. And he, and he points out that I think it's Pirandello remarks that like actors needed to do everything hugely physically on stage and now with a camera, they need to do next to nothing. And yet the movement director still needs to be able to understand all of that inner work mm. to be able to, to support actors in making very small, subtle choices. It's mm. not that all the work that you do as a stage actor is negated, it's just redirected. Yes. And this is really, it's really, it's a really beautiful essay. And I needed to read it to remind myself of like, okay, what is it we're facing? Because this is not new, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's a fascinating role movement director. It's kind of, it's a, I mean this in the best possible way. It's almost like living within the cracks. It's like a, it's a, it's a role that's hovering over everything. It's an aerial view um, and definitely needed. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fascinating. Unsung hero almost, but yeah. Trying to remind people that like movement is like, it's like trying to describe the water to the fish. Mm, yeah. It's just going on all the time. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for talking to us today. That's been amazing. Thank All you. right. Absolutely. See you later. Bye. Bye.